Hey YouTube, Audio Olympian here bringing the sound and video to you today. Coming to you live from New Audio Olympia, where the world meets through music, movies, and speakers. Okay, today's video, kind of unique. Haven't posted one in a little while. Uh, a lot of things have been going on for us here. First off, hope you guys are being uh, safe and staying healthy. And we want to thank you for joining us today. If this, if this is your first time visiting our channel, we'd love to see you back. Uh, this is a channel that's all video, audio, home theater, music, stereo, kind of everything in between. But we are not the <laughs> professional high and high standard video uh, like a lot of the other guys out there. Nothing against them. I follow them. I watch them. I, I like all their videos. But we're just a little bit more down to earth, lower quality um, content here. So hope you enjoy it. So if you like it, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification. So that'll let you know when we drop another video to the two. All right, today's video is gonna be a three segment video. Um, I know which is kind of weird. Most of the time videos are only on, on one thing here, but I wanted to kind of go over a few different things. One, uh, just show a little bit of updating on the uh, theater room here, what's been going on. We've gotten quite a bit done here, more than I anticipated. There's still a long way to go, a lot, a lot of work to do. I'm taking the very easy route on a lot of things, so just kind of wanted to show everybody what I'm doing there. And then um, talk a little bit more about my BRXs here. I've been living with those for a little while now in, in different areas of my house uh, for TV, then for music, and then now uh, home theater here. And just to give you the uh, little update of each one of those areas there on the BRXs. And I did purchase a new uh, nice little toy, uh, Peachtree Audio Hybrid Nova Pre, which is a tube preamp and digital DAC together. Unique piece of equipment. Um, got it at a pretty good rate. Bought it used secondhand off of eBay. And I uh, just kind of wanted to go over a little bit of what I feel is, or what I felt were uh, some good key points in that, if you're interested in that kind of equip. All right, so let's get into the video. Okay, first up is gonna be the BRXs. And I gotta tell you, man, I really enjoy these speakers. I'm very happy with this purchase. I love it. Uh, I like the way it sounds. I like uh, the depthness of it, the clarity. I've had a chance now to kind of even match it up to some of my um, floor standing speakers. Definitely nothing, I mean, anytime you're gonna match any speaker or compare one speaker to another speaker, it's always gonna be a little bit off and biased. Meaning, you know, if, if they're not from the same brand company, and they're not designed almost exactly the same, that you're always gonna be comparing apples to oranges. But I just thought I wanted to just try it out as a little bit of uniqueness in my own systems. But most of the time, most of us know, a bookshelf is not gonna have the depth like a tower is going to because of the cabinet and usually a tower has more drivers. So it's gonna be able to punch out a little bit more bass. And I gotta say, these really passed with flying colors for base and depth of a bookshelf speaker compared to those towers. So here is the Peachtree Audio Nova Pre. And you can see right here, it's got the tube inside of it. And it's got a nice little blue tone to it. I like that. Matches uh, my Emotiva gear and just some of the other gear that I have. I did pair it up with my Carver 275. I got a couple music samples we're gonna show here. And of course, I only do that. I know you're not gonna get the real idea behind of how the true sound is listening through either just your phone, your laptop, or your headphones, whatever it is. But I like to do those just because it makes everything come alive, brings some life to it. Um, you still are gonna want, you know, I highly recommend, you're still gonna wanna check it out somewhere, somehow, before you um, make a decision on any purchase. Now, the reason I got this one here, I got it at a really good deal. Um, 
450. I think it's retails even second hand still somewhere between six and seven hundred something like that but i kind of wanted i was just curious on a two preamp i don't have any two preamps the closest i was ever to a two preamp was when i had my prima luna integrated amp that i uh, ended up selling once i purchased my bob carver 275 tube amp because that thing is amazing and however i matched it up with my peach tree audio against my old school Denon that I have been using with this uh, particular amp. And I gotta say, man, this thing did push out a lot more bass. It was more, way more bassier than my Denon, which, I mean, some improvements didn't surprise me. This Denon is over 20 years old, but I love this thing. I'm, I'm hanging on to it forever. They don't make receivers like this anymore. It is a beast. It's like 50, 60 pounds. And even without the pre-outs and me using amps, this thing kicks out some serious power per channel. It is the ABR 3600, just in case you're wondering. So, however, going back to the amps, I did use my Peachtree Nova with this PS Audio Stellar M700 amplifier. And man, I gotta say, I really, really like that amplifier. It's a Class D, 350 watt. That's a mono, Class D amp. And I was using it with this here in conjunction with my Emotiva XPA-1L. And that can sync, or you can transition it over to Class A or Class AB for the sound. To be honest, when I do that, I don't really notice much of a difference at all in the sound, if any difference at all. Um, so with my Golden Ear R1s, reference R1 here, that's the speakers that I'm using here with this small system. And, uh, or not small, but my, it's a smaller sound, or uh, equipment system, being that my theater is, I got all my amps over there and uh, 11 speakers, two subs, not including the two additional subs you get in your reference Golden Air speakers over there. But anyway, um, yeah, I really like this. So I'm thinking about purchasing another M700. And that was, it. for a Class D amp, it really sounds very, very good and clean. It's nice, tight, and punchy. Um, it is more power than than this one here. The other benefits behind this Class D amp, and this is not no cheap amp by any means. I think it's somewhere around 1500. You might be able to get it a little cheaper than that on the used market. But um, <clears throat> it is smaller, it takes up a lot less space, it doesn't get as hot, it's lighter, it's easy to move around. And it's very, very um, sleek. All you get is the little PS Audio light blue light comes on so again it matches over here to my Peachtree Audio preamp um, and that's it very very simple nothing to it no no you know spectacular screens or lights or anything like that which I don't mind I really do like the Emotiva look which is why I have a bunch of their amps but for the sound quality and the size and the room and less heat uh, the Stellar M700 is a bang of a deal so I'm probably going to get another one of those to make my stereo uh, setup complete because I was trying to eventually see if somebody would put for sale an XPA-1L that I can match for to have two of those to run my stereo setup here for my, for my listening room. That is what we did here. So let's check out some music with this one.
we're getting in here, walking in here to the theater room. Again, my space actually ended up being a lot bigger than I thought it was. So it's, it ended up being around 12, 12 and a half wide and 20 feet in depth and length, which I really like and enjoy the depth because it allows me to be able to um, get my full on, where are they at here? There's two of them up there. Of course, I'm gonna switch those out later. I'm, I'm only using my, um, for my height channels here, for my Atmos effects, the Golden Ear uh, Super Sat 3s which are the smaller ones I'm gonna be putting up because I wanted to get it up nice and quick and easy. Those are small and light and um, they weren't too hard to put up there. But I will be switching those out very soon with my um, Supersat 50s. And I got the 60s running over here. And of course my references up front. <clears throat> and my war machine. The PB, PB16 SVS, right? Love that speaker. Along with the Golden Ear reference. These are the big towers. <clears throat> I have a mobile elite screen and that is 150 inch, 120, 120 inch, yeah. Had to think about that for a second. So all I did here was, in going in with my theme of Olympia, kind of, I like the look here of getting it more of like a theater too, like a more commercial theater, which is why I just decided to rock the curtains on the sides here. Pretty simple. When you don't have the finished ceiling, it allows you to be able to do a lot of things. There. So all I did was I ordered all these curtains here. If you're wondering, it's just brick right behind it. Because the other thing was I did want to leave brick up um, in some research and study lately, brick is the best um, material for sound isolation, meaning keeping sound in the room. It's not the best material for, you know, um, acoustic, acoustically, but for sound isolation, keeping the sound in the room, it is the best material. So I didn't want to really do anything to the brick here in my lower level of my basement area but I don't really like how brick looks. So I just bought some rods and some curtains, very cheap. I went and got, it's basically conduit rod, metal rod. I don't think I have any to show um, around. I went to Menards and bought 10 foot lengths because that was the, the longest I think I could get there. And I had to put some connectors in there to connect a few of the poles together. 10 foot lengths. I got these curtains here on eBay. I think the pole, the rod, the conduit rod was like seven bucks. These curtains were, I think for two five foot panels by, they're almost five foot by 10 foot length. For two of those was like $28. And right now I have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six seven, eight. I have eight of them in my room right now to give me that nice theater light look. Now you can also still hear that echo a little bit. That's because I don't have anything on my ceiling. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. I want to keep the height. I don't want to drop it down to a drop ceiling and lose that, lose that height. I like having the high ceiling here because it does affect the sound a lot better, allows it to travel a little bit better. Um, but you can hear that echo there and at least I can. I'm not sure if you're picking that up on mic. I really want to do something to get rid of that. So I might just paint it there. I'm considering on just painting it up here black and then um, getting some clouds up there, some uh, sound dampening clouds to put up all along my ceiling up here. That'll be easy. It'll be quicker, um, a lot less expensive. <clears throat> and then over here, I still got to finish off this wall. This wall is all set. We're going to be doing some drywalling in here pretty soon. And then finishing up drywalling all up around in here. I have to cover around my furnace. See, this is uh, very tricky here. And this is just temporary stuff. I just kind of put a makeshift wall up right here as well. And it's nothing major. Um, in the event I have to work on my furnace, I can kind of 
unscrew and tear these walls out pretty simple um, and I, I did it that way just so that way in the event we got to work on our furnace or do any work um, I can get to it or the repairman can get to it pretty simple and it's not going to damage or tear anything up um, drastically to get to it so over here is where the equipment rack is still got to do a little bit of work on this here but those are the amps emotivas xpa2 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 and xpa5 the three mains are running off of the xpa2s because i have those bridged which puts them at a thousand watts each which you know it probably doesn't run a full thousand watts but it it gets nice and loud and it is louder than anything else that i've had that's been at rated at like a 400 450 500 watts um they are still louder than that so i'm assuming they're pushing quite a bit of watts there and then for my surrounds over here my marantz mk27702 i believe yep which still works great for me and started doing a little bit here you can see i got my camera in the way here but just kind of getting my back wall set up here and again got a lot of work to do but i've come a long way if you've seen any of the videos before and i may um link one down in the description of what this area looked like prior to me putting all the work in here so there we have it that was just a quick little update here again please leave a comment feel free to like the video subscribe to our channel if you'd like it and we'll see you guys on the next video